Alright people, welcome back to the second lesson uh, in summary supported beans. Uh, let me just see if I can move this quickly here. Um, there we go, I can make it as high as possible. Alright, remember, draw the load diagram at top of a new page because you're going to draw the shear force diagram below that and then you're going to draw the bending moment diagram below that as well. Okay, so I can just move it away from you like so. I think I'll do this here, yeah. Right, there we go. Right, people, there's the question. It says refer to the simply supported beam, calculate the support reactions, which I already done for you. There we go. Okay, and I suggest you stop the video. You do the re you do the calculations and you check that VA is 66.57 kilonewtons and VC is 65.43. And notice that people, I've drawn the supports as arrows like that there. We that's also taken as acceptable because normally the reactions are only in the vertical plane. Okay, so I've drawn a drone. So whether that's a pin or that's a roller or vice versa doesn't matter. The reaction will still be the same. So I can either draw it as a pin and a roller or as two arrows like that there. So check that VA is in fact 66.57 kilonewtons and check that VC is in fact 85.43 kilonewtons. Check it and then you continue. Right. Next part of the question is, draw the shear force diagram, draw the bending moment diagram showing all the values. Then number D there says, determine the position of the point of contraflexure. Mm, nice long word. I will explain that when we get there. Okay. Right. So, what's the first thing we do is, start at the top of a new page, and then we project all the lines down where we think the shear force and bending moment diagrams are going to turn. So, I'm going to do my little thingy here, and hope I can draw it nice and straight. Let's see, I'm going to project down from the top of our page all the way to the bottom, like so. And I'm going to do this like so. And then like so, we, all the loads are going to change. I draw vertical parallel lines with the ruler. Not smooth with my eye like a lot of people want to do. Draw with the ruler nicely. Remember, we're drawing graphs. It should be to good scale, okay? So there's the points where my diagrams are most likely going to change or turn on. Right, so, shear force diagram is somewhere over here, somewhere down in the middle third of my page, like so. And that's my zero line for shear force diagram. So that's shear force diagram. And that's going to be plus, and that's going to be minus, and that's my zero line. Right, at A, I've got an upper load of plus 66.57, so to some good scale, from there to there is 66. 0.57. Okay. Right, right, right. Notice, are you tuning in? Now, on the previous diagram, I didn't say it, but I'm going to say it here. Okay. On the shear force diagram, where we have no load, we have a straight horizontal line across, like so. Okay. So, all the way across there, we have 66.57. Okay. What's happening at B? I've got a downward load of minus 68. So I pick up my calculator and I say 66.57 and I say minus 68 and I get minus 1.43. What does the minus sign mean? It means plotted at that demand just below the zero line and I put in my value of 1.43 like so. Okay, so that's 66.57 and that's 1.43. I'm drawing it to a good scale possible. Right. Now, if you think back to the first, the first uh, uh, beam we did, when we have a UDL between points, we have an in a straight incline line. A lot of people say we have a straight line. No, we have a straight incline line. There's a straight horizontal line. We have no load. We have a UDL. We have a straight incline line. Right. So with that minus 1.43 on my calculator, I say minus 12 times 5. Did you get that? With minus 1.43 on my calculator, don't clear it, I say take away 12 times 5. So I say minus 12 times 5, and I get minus 61.43. And it's a straight incline line down to there. Okay. So from there to there is 61. 0.43 to a reasonable scale. Remember, we're drawing graphs. Right. What's happening at C? I've got a load of plus 
85.43 why is it plus because it's going upwards so with this value on my calculator don't clear it i say plus 85.43 and i get plus 24.00 exactly right so if that's 65.47 it's gonna be oh i'm gonna leave it a point north no so it's plus 24 and then from C to D, I've got the load of minus 12 times 2. Okay, so what's minus 12 times 2? It's minus 24. What's plus 24 minus 24? It's 0. And it's a straight inclined line down to that point there, and it's 0 to that point over there. Okay, so that is plus, that's minus, and that's plus. Okay, there we go. Right. Did you get that? Right. Plus 66.57. Horizontal across because there's no load. Minus 68 is minus 1.43. Minus 1.43. Take away 12 times 5, which is 60. Gives you minus 61.43. Plus 85.43. Gives me plus 24. 24. Take away minus 24. Straight incline line down to zero. It must close if it doesn't close you go back to the beginning and you start again because you made a mistake somewhere don't fudge it because i will see it because i draw it at myself and i'll look at yours against mine okay right draw the bending moment diagram there we go so i'm going to draw my zero line mm -hmm. right To my zero line like so. Um, is my zero line over there? Uh, let's see. Give me a diagram. And of course, as you know, we plot minus at the top and positive at the bottom. And I'll explain that why just now. Right. Come on. Right, bending moment diagram starts at zero, ends at zero. Okay. How do we find the bending moment diagram um, at the next point? Uh, sorry, how do we find the value of the bending moment diagram at the next point? We find the area, we sum the areas, and we sell them, we sum them algebraically. What does algebraically mean? We add them with the signs. We have a rectangle, okay. So therefore, the area of the rectangle here is 66.57 times 2, and it's plus. Why is it plus? Because the area is plus. So the value we're going to plot at the bottom of the zero line. So what's 66.57 times 2? 66. Point, sorry, uh, 0.57 times 2 is equal to plus 133.14. Okay. So there's my point over there. Have I got it there? Yeah. So to good scale, I plot this over there like so. Now notice from A to B, we have no load. So from A to B, the bending moment diagram is a straight inclined line down to that point like so. Did you get that? Where there's no load on the beam, we have a straight inclined line. We have UDLs, we've got downward parabolic curves. And the value there is 133.14. 133.14 Okay, right now How do I find the bending moment at the next point there to that positive value? I add the negative area mm, I add the negative area of that trapezium. Yes Okay to that negative area I add So to that value there, I add or take away the area of the trapezium there. Okay, I don't find the area of the trapezium. 1.43 plus 61.43 times of times 5. So 133.14 take away the area of the trapezium there. And what do I get? Stop the video and work it out for self. I get minus 24.01 I get minus 24.01 
and from B to C it's a UDL so it is curving like so and it's going oh, mm, curving like so and that point there is 24.01 okay and it's a downward parabolic curve okay why is it downward because of gravity and maybe UDL there right how do you find the bending moment at the next point? It should be zero, but we're going to check it. So, so from there, so this value here is minus 24.01, remember? That's positive, and that's negative, no? Negative, positive, negative above, positive below. So, this, so what's minus 24.01? 24.01, and to that we add the positive area. Why do we add? Because it's positive. Okay, so what's the formula for the area of this triangle? It's half 24 times 2. So what's half 24 times 2? It is plus 24. So what's minus 24.01 plus 24? It is 0. Okay, and because we have a U down from C to D, the curve is doing... Mm, I, want, I want the same color. Okay. So it's going down to zero. Okay. So minus 24.01 plus the area of that positive triangle takes it back to zero. And I get I get minus 0 0.01, which for us is zero, which is good enough for us. Okay. So people, there's the bending moment diagram. Okay, bending moment diagram. Right, let's go to the I'll say it's more better, but let's just go to the last part of the question. It says determine the position of the point of contraflexion. Okay, now let's see what that is. People, contraflexion. Now, this is the bending moment diagram. Notice it starts at zero there, goes down, and it turns, it goes back up there. And that position there is the point of contraflexion. Point of Contraflexure. And that is where the bending moment is equal to zero. We can see. There it's zero. Plus 133.14. It gets smaller, 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 smaller. It gets not, and it gets bigger, bigger, negative 24, and back to. So that's the point of contraflexure. Now, the question says, calculate the position. Why do I want to know that? Right. Now, people, have you got your thinking caps on? Right. Let's imagine there's your beam. Okay. And if I draw my beam like so, if I just draw it like again, okay, like so. I'm giving it some thickness. Now, there's my beam. There's point A. There's point C. Okay. Can you see there, the beam, it actually bends down like so, and it does that is doing this is the end of the beam and there's the end of the beam okay between the supports the beam is beam bending down it's called sagging sagging over the support it's bending that way it's called hogging hogging now of course we put steel in the beams. Why do we put steel in there? Steel is to resist tension. Okay. Concrete is, steel is good in tension but weak in compression. But concrete is good in compression but weak in tension. So wherever we have tension in the structure, we put steel. Okay. So if I look at the fibers here at the bottom. Is it in tension or compression? It is in tension. And at the top it is in compression. And as we go over the support there, the fibers at the top here are the intentional compression. They are in tension. That means they want to break apart. And at the bottom they're in compression. Okay. So from there to there, the fibers are in compression and they, and somewhere from there to there, it changes. Fibers at the bottom are in tension, tension, and over there's compression, so somewhere over here, those, that nature of that stresses changes. And where does it happen? 
it happens at the point of contraflexion. Okay, that's why we want to know what it is. Now, we put steel in the beam where we have tension. So we're going to put steel, I'm going to draw it in blue, we're going to put steel in the beam over there. And we're going to put steel in the top over there. And we bend it around like so. We bend it around like so, actually. Okay. So, where there's tension, we put in steel. So, there's going to be steel at the bottom there, and steel all along the top there. Okay. And somewhere, that there, we call a lap. A lap. The steel overlap each other. And that distance there, if I can draw it in, that distance there, it's got to be a minimum, okay, and that's stated in the design code. That lap there, that that the mount that that those two uh, that the, the top steel and the bottom steel overlap each other has got to be a minimum, not a maximum. Okay, minimum for safety. Okay, and somewhere inside there is sitting that position of that point of contraflexion. Okay, so we want to know where that point is, so we can work that lapping so that the whole beam tension and as the nature of the stresses changes there that the beam carries the load safely so the question there says work at the position of the point of contraflexion okay and then people also notice there when we draw in the bending moment diagram we draw the bending moment diagram on the tension side of the beam okay this tension there's tension. So there's my bending moment diagram. It's my bending moment diagram. Can you see that? So when we look at the bending moment diagram, we know the steel is going to be at the bottom there and it's going to be at the top there. Okay? And that lap there, inside there, is where the point of contra is where the point of contra fracture is going to occur. Okay? Now, if you pick up books from others overseas like America and the UK, you find that this convention here is reverse. They plot plus at the top and negative at the bottom. Doesn't matter. Okay? So, if that's the case, this beam will look something like so. There'll be a mirror image of that. That is fine. But in South Africa and in a lot of other countries, we plot the bending moment diagram on the tension side of the beam. So, we plot shear force plus at the top, negative at the bottom, negative at the top, and positive at the bottom, so that it lines up with the tension side of the beam. So now you know what the point of contraflection is all about, and why we have bending moment, why we have bending moment diagram minus at the top and negative at the bottom. Okay, right, people. That's all. That's what I want to say about that. There, let's do point D. Determine the position of the point of contraflexure where this sorry where this is sitting over there. Right. So I'm gonna clean up my board. And we can finish up the question. Right, people, we can see from this here that the point of contraflexure is just going to be the left of C. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut my beam somewhere over there like so. Okay, and I'm going to draw it over here again. Um, let's see. Right, so I'm going to, so, like so. So let's see over there. Um, and I'm going to call that point X, and that's going to be my 85.43 kilonewtons, and my UDL, which I'm showing as a squiggly line, okay, is 12 kilonewtons per meter, 12 kilonewtons per meter, and the distance... That's two meters, and I'm gonna call that distance x because I don't know what it is. That means from there to there is x. I don't know what it is. Okay, but I know it's to the left of c. It's just the left of c. Run. The next thing we do is people. We take moments about point x. Okay. But what do we know what's happening at point X? 
bending moment to zero. So we use the fact that the bending moment at x is equal to zero, and we use that fact and calculate the distance x. So I'm going to say bending moment at x, which is zero. Okay. And about, I'm taking moment about x, so about that point x there, this will be minus 85.43 times x. Okay, because it's anticlockwise with respect to x, plus the UDL there, okay, which is 12. Right, what's the length of the UDL? It's 2 plus x. Okay, but remember there, we're taking moments of a UDL. It's 12 times the length of the UDL, times half the length of the UDL. Now remember, the centroid for a UDL acts to the center of the length of the load. So it's 12 times 2 plus x times half of 2 plus x. So it's 12 times 2 plus x times half of 2 plus x. Okay, is equal to 0 because we know the moments at x is equal to 0. Okay, so the bending moment at x, which in fact is equal to 0, minus 85.43 times x, plus 12 times the UDL, times half the UDL. Okay, right. So now we've got an equation in x, we can solve it. Right. So now you stop the video, and you do your algebra and your famous mathematics, and you find there that at the end, all of that of there, Right, I find that there. After multiplying all the brackets, collect like terms, simplify, I get x squared minus 10.24x minus 10. x squared, let me do it again, minus 10.24x plus 4 is equal to 0. Don't just, okay, don't just assume it's correct. Check it out for yourself. I've removed the brackets, I've added up, I've collected like terms, and what do we see we get? We actually get a quadratic equation, that's right. We get a quadratic equation. And how do we solve a quadratic equation? We use the formula. And what does the formula look like? The formula says there that x is equal to minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, all of that, over 2a. Okay, we're now solving that quadratic equation using the formula. Okay, so what's A? A is plus 1. What's B? B is minus 10, and C is plus 4. Put it into there, and we're going to get two possible answers. Okay, so do the do the, the maths, and check that you get the same as me. Uh, people, of course, there's a, there's, we're using the formula to solve, to solve it there. So, x is equal to minus B, and B is minus 10, so it's minus 10.24 plus minus minus 10.24 all squared minus 4, A and A is 1, C is 4 all over 2A and we get x equal to 9.83, don't just assume what I've got, or x is equal to 0 0.41, and x is a distance, yeah, the distance from there to there. Now, people at this point, I mean, a quadratic equation always gives two possible solutions. One is right, one's going to be wrong. Now, can this be correct? No, it can't be. The beam is only 9 meters long. So that's the wrong answer, and that is the correct answer. But the question says, determine the position of the point of quantum pressure. You must, you must now deduce. You must say, therefore, the point 
of contraflexion is 0.41 meters left of C. Or, if you want, you can say it is 2.41 meters left of D or 2.41 meters from D because you can only go left. Okay, a lot of students just stop over there and then they don't say that. You must deduce the answer. Okay, so therefore, we know people that this crossover we spoke of earlier is occurring, the, the, the crossover of the nature of the stresses is occurring 0.41 meters left of C, so we know where the lap must be sitting. Okay, people, we've answered the whole question. Okay, we've done support reactions, we've drawn the shear force diagram, we've drawn the minimum diagram, and we position the point of contraflexure, people, and that's typically how you work at all of those over there. Okay, so people, uh, um, as I said, I'm stressing again, when you work through this, um, stop the video, do the calculations, check if you get the same as me before you move on. Okay, okay people, I think I will work through another example of, 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 of this nature, and then you, I'll let you loose, and you can do all the others by yourself. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.